Hey everyone, my name is Gamer Cory, and welcome back to another Anthem video. Now, in this video, I want to teach you guys how to unlock the Legend of Dawn armor if you did the pre order of Legend of Dawn edition of Anthem. Now, there are a couple prerequisites that we actually have to do prior to receiving the the armor and some of the other additions that you got for pre-ordering anthem but that's going to be kind of separate i'm kind of focusing on the legend of dawn armor now i really think that this armor is pretty sweet looking it's what i'm currently using on my javelin but there's a few things that we have to do prior to actually unlocking it now obviously the first thing before you can do anything else is complete a couple of the tutorial missions which is going to be basically the first two now when you do complete those tutorial missions you're going to finally meet up with a lady named tessin and she's going to give you your first free lancer mission now upon completing that mission you're going to arrive back in the city or fort tarsus and you're going to be able to kind of explore a little bit more and you're going to have a few more options in order to talk to a few of the citizens and people that want to be able to give you contracts so like agents and contracts and and other free roam type missions now to be able to get the legend of dawn armor from your legend of dawn edition of anthem you're going to have to talk to a character named prospero now he will be in the market of the fort tarsus hub and you will need to complete a quick mission for him which is a normal standard story mission and it's called the lost arcanist mission when you return back to the to the uh, Fort Tarsus hub, you're going to speak to Tessin, Yaro, and Matthias. You're going to have to listen to Yaro's long-winded cutscene story, which takes about seven, eight minutes roughly or so, but it's very valuable to the story of Anthem. Now, you'll be able to find Prospero in a short stretch of the market stalls in front of your javelin. There will be a handy waypoint once you get to this quest. You need to re-talk and receive the orders, and you're going to be starting a mission called Lighting a Fire Mission Objective. And now you're going to head into free play, and you're going to have to collect and find three pieces of ember. Now the next question that you might be asking yourself is, what are some of the best ways to be able to find the ember, ember pieces that we need for this specific mission? Now just keep in mind, you only have to find three. Now, when I was out and about in the free play, I was able to find two different types of world events. And one world one world event actually gave me two pieces of ember after completing that entire world event. And the other one was able to give me one. Now, you don't necessarily just have to complete these, these world events to get the embers. You can actually get them from doing some good old fashioned exploring. All you have to do is head out into the free roam mode in search of all harvest harvestable plants, minerals, or chests. And uh, all of those are gonna have a decent chance of giving you some ember pieces. Now I would like to note here that up until the mission lighting a fire from Prospero, I was not able to find any of the embers. Lighting a fire mission is actually designed as an introduction and use of embers going forward so they really don't exist prior to this specific mission. Also, if you guys have found weapons out in the world and other salvageable parts that you can go ahead and break those weapons down into other things, save that until this point in time because there is actually a chance that you might be able to salvage and find ember pieces from those weapons and other things and items that you get from just being out in the world. Now there are a lot of different ways that you guys can go about receiving these embers. I personally did the world events that just kind of popped up randomly in the world, but there are a few lootable or harvestable parts right around Fort Tarsus. Now, unfortunately I don't have any videos of them specifically right around Fort Tarsus, but there's a whole bunch just right there. You just have to find them and you can interact with them and they're going to be a little bit different than the rest of the entire landscape. So just keep looting everything until you can find these three pieces of ember and then go ahead and return to Fort Tarsus and talk to Prospero. Now, since the lighting a fire mission, I have been able to find tons of amber out in the the world whether they're just exploring with a few friends or just participating in some of the world events or just things like that 
And I honestly don't even know how many pieces of ember that I currently have, but after this mission, you'll seem like you're going to start to find a whole bunch of them. It just seems like the initial three, as far as the quest goes, it will feel like it takes forever. But I promise going forward, it will be really easy as you find them all the time. But just keep your eyes open, especially when you're in free roam and with friends, that you can just loot everything possible and you're going to receive a ton of parts um you're going to be able to do a lot more crafting because you're going to find the the rare items the you know the common the uncommon the rare the epic legend but you have to be able to do like just free roam loot everything that you possibly can it's going to make it so much easier when you do this now you don't even have to really like really focus on this mission because you don't have to just go out there receive those three pieces of ember and then come right back you could do as much exploring as you want and that's kind of what I did. I was taking my time, kind of just checking out the world and seeing what was really out there. I got into, uh, you know, a lot of different fights with like the hounds and the scorpions. And I found we found some Dominion people later, uh, things like that. So just kind of keep in mind that this is really set at your own pace. You don't have to just hurry up and get it and come back. Now, if you want the Legend of Dawn armor right away, which I think is epic, that's what I am personally using on my character. So it's completely up to you. Just Go out and get it, come back, and have some fun with it. Now, the Ember portion of this entire mission is going to take the longest amount of time. I believe it took me about 15, maybe 20 minutes to find them, and that's because I spent a lot of time out in the world just exploring, kind of getting used to the surroundings, seeing what is kind of out there, and that's when I just randomly happened to come across the world events where a couple other players were participating in. And then when you're able to participate with other players, everybody was able to get the loot that uh, you receive from that, including if you play with a multiple group of people, then you guys can actually receive all of the harvestable parts from the plants and chests and things like that as well. Now, when you do return to Prospero with one, with the three embers that you do find, you're going to be able to talk to him again, and crafting will now become unlocked. Now, when you return to Prospero, you will be able to access your Legend of Dawn armor and the other items that you should receive now from your pre-order or the Legend of Dawn edition. Now, if you got just the regular edition, now this is where you're going to be able to access your other parts as well. But if you got the Legend of Dawn edition, you can get the armor and the rifle. Now, you're probably wondering how you can actually equip your Legend of Dawn armor and the other bonus items that you received from your pre-order. Once you have claimed them from the reward section at the store, anything that you've claimed will now have a green check mark next to it. And you'll need to head on over to the forge. Now, once you get over to the forge, you're going to have access to all the individual parts. And I pre-ordered my game from GameStop, so I got an emblem that has the colors scheme of GameStop, which is like the white, red, and black, as an option to put on my my javelin. But I chose something completely different. Now, this is where you're going to be able to customize your javelin really however way that you would like. And you can spend a ton of time... And make sure that you guys spend some time because this is how it's going to look and this is what you're going to be seeing a majority of the game pretty much with any other type of customization. Now the one thing I like about Anthem say versus like Red Dead Redemption is yes you can change the suit color schemes and whatnot but you can't change your character but you really never see your character in Anthem whereas when you customize your character in like Red Dead Redemption for instance you can't change it ever going forward but you can with your with your suit going forward in Anthem. So if you don't like something later, you can always change it. So basically from here, the Legend of Dawn items are all equipable, all in the same way that you would equip anything else. So basically you have to do it manually and you have to go into each section individually and manually equip which pieces of armor that you would like to wear on your javelin. Now I am personally using all of the Legend of Dawn armor but I think that the picture of the Legend of Dawn armor that's all chromed out is pretty sweet, but it's not the color scheme that I went. So make sure that you guys are spending time. When I did my initial customization of my Javelin, I probably spent almost an hour getting it the way that I wanted it. And I probably should have done that in some of the other games that I've played, especially online, where I've rushed it and maybe I wasn't quite content with it. But the one thing that I do like about anthem is that you can customize your javelin 
at any time that you want. So you're going to be able to go back and repeat the process as many times as you want. And you can always upgrade your craft like new items and maybe when you get different parts and armor, you can add them to it. So you're, you're not just stuck with it once you create it. You can always kind of go back to it and redo it if that if you want to so definitely spend time on it because you're going to be showing it off make sure that the color schemes are awesome i see a lot of people rocking the red black and white thing i haven't seen anybody with my with my look yet which is kind of neat when i was playing with three friends last night i i was the only person that was completely different than everybody else so i thought that was kind of unique and awesome that I was able to put that much time and effort into my javelin to make it very unique and individualized. But anyway, that is all the time that I have for in today's video. I would love to know what your guys' color scheme is, so go ahead and leave a comment down below. And also, if this video helped you in any way, I do want to have some other how-to videos for Anthem and some gameplay videos and whatnot. So if it helped you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. But until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it. And you guys, stay gaming.